Hi, I'm Stefan Nell from Visual Impact, and today I'm going to be talking about a very exciting new product we have, the Sony Venice. The Sony Venice is a 6K full-frame cinema camera um, and has a sensor of 36 by 24 mm and it's a full-frame CMOS sensor. Uh, the amazing thing about the Sony Venice is that it has 15 stops of latitude with a really wide gamut range uh, that accommodates both ASUS and REC 2020 color space. Okay, the camera also has dual ISOs um, of 500 or 2500 ISO, um, and it takes about a five second reboot to change it between the two um, ISO ranges on these cameras. The Sony Venice is both PL mounted and an E-mount built in behind the PL mount uh, that can be accessed by just taking the PL mount off. Uh, this allows for a huge variety of lenses, uh, both in Super 35 and in full frame. Um, it has one to two stops shallower depth of field than standard 35, and that is due to the full frame sensor. The Sony Venice allows you to shoot in 4x3 in amorphic, in 4K, and then in full frame in 6K. The codec used on the Sony Venice is the XOCN codec, which is a 16-bit original camera negative codec, or in a more generic term, a compressed RAW format. The other format that this camera allows you to shoot is uh, standard Sony RAW, allows you to shoot in ProRes, and it also allows you to shoot in XAVC, and you can dual record. In other words, you can shoot in RAW on the R7 recorder, as well as internally on a S by S Pro card. There are new design factors in this camera that I really like. For example, it has a universal rail system that you can take the handle on and off. Um, so depending if you're going to go onto a gyro head or a steady cam or so forth, you can actually custom build this camera how you want to use it in the field. The new eyepiece on the Sony Venice camera is a really well designed and functional IP system. The actual optics inside are really good and it's one of the best eyepieces I've seen in a cinema camera. For the first time in a Sony camera, there are industry standard connectors and plugs built into the camera. Okay? There's a 24 volt three pin Lima output that fits onto most of the standard film accessories like Prestons, um, lens control systems, uh, transmitter systems. Everything that you would think to use in a cinema camera has been thought about in this camera and the accessory plugs are there. There's also a standard high rose plug like there's always been on a Sony. There's a Fisher 11 for the viewfinder and not the uh, 3M plug that was in the previous models. Um, there's also obviously standard uh, high rose uh, 12 volt out as you would normally get in a Sony camera. There is also a four pin 12 volt XLR and a five pin XLR for audio. The Sony Venice also has a dual interface on the actual camera body. So we have the main camera menu interface here and you can access the traditional Sony menu by holding the menu button in and getting to the traditional menus that you expect from a Sony camera. Uh, when you push home, you get back to your quick um, access panel so you can change just about everything on the camera that you need to while shooting uh, directly on the right hand side of the camera and on the operator side of the camera we have another display panel. This display panel allows the camera operator to change various things like frame speed, shutter angle and then obviously the most important being the motorized NDs. You can literally change the NDs uh, by pushing the up and down arrows all the way from a 0.3 ND to a 2.4 ND just by the touch of a button. The Sony Venice camera allows you to do dual recording, which means you can record simultaneously on an AXSM card as well as a traditional S by S card uh, that goes into the camera in the dual slots. The R7 recorder allows you to record in either Sony RAW or in XOCN codec, which stands for X Original Camera Negative Codec, which is a 16-bit uh, compressed RAW codec developed by Sony. One of the other functions I really like about this camera is that it has dual record buttons. So there's a nice big bright red record button on the assistant side and similarly a nice big record red button on the camera operator side. As with all Sony cameras, there are various custom assignable user buttons located all over the camera body. These buttons are custom programmable to allow the operator to dial in any quick function that he or she needs. There are multiple SDI outputs on the Sony Venice. There are four located on the back of the body here that allow you to do 12G, 3G, or 1.5G SDI. There's also a direct monitor output that can be assigned any LUT and is a direct and duplicate of the viewfinder. 
The Sony Venice, like any other Sony camera, also has a gen lock and a time code input on SDI. I'm a really big fan of the Sony Venice. I think Sony have delivered an amazing product. It's something that I've been waiting for a long time to see coming out of the Sony stable. The only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it has limited frame speed options. There's no high frame rate option. You are locked to six, up to 60 frames in 4K or 30 frames in 6K. At the moment, there's no news yet of going to 120 or 150 frames a second as is the standard of all cinema cameras. I hope that this will happen in the future and I hope that it will happen soon to complete this camera system and make it the most awesome camera in the world.